again, the, the title of the course is How to Study the Bible, and if we're going to have to we want to know how to study the Bible. We've got to find out about the Bible. So uh, this particular section, we were looking at the three dispensations of the Bible, two of them before the cross and one after the cross. And I know that that graphic isn't real good, but uh, we looked at the patriarchal dispensation. That's Adam to Christ. Uh, that was that's for the, all the Gentiles and those who uh, lived before the cross uh, and the patriarch. That just meant father. Uh, the fathers basically were the ones who God dealt with and left it up to the fathers to uh, take care of the families and to teach them and to try to bring them up right. And we talked about some things that went into that patriarchal dispensation. And then uh, from that you have the Mosaic dispensation, which was to the Jews only. Exodus chapter 20 is when the giving of the law of Moses took place. And that group of people who came out of Egypt being somewhere, anywhere in the neighborhood of two to six million people. <laughs> just have to guesstimate, but you know that there were 604,000 plus men of fighting age. Alright? So, this is when the Mosaic Dispensation started, but only for those people and their families then following who came out of Egypt. Those proselyted to it. But uh, it started with a promise to Abraham, and then they come out of Egypt and uh, given the law of Moses. But that lasted until, again, till Christ came. And that's where we're at this morning. We're going to look at the Christian dispensation. And that's the time period that we live in. Uh, this is Christ to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Uh, Jesus uh, said to his apostles, uh, all authority has been given to me, he said, uh, in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, not just the Jews, but of all nations, baptizing them uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I, and that's Jesus, have taught you, and what? Lo, or behold, I am with you even to the end of the age. The King James Version says to the end of the world. Well, the end of this world will be the end of the age. That's when uh, uh, Truly, our movement into eternity will will begin. That, that we'll see that that great change. So, for the Christian dispensation, Jesus Christ was born under the law of Moses. Galatians chapter four, verse four, uh, King James version. In the fullness of time, uh, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman. That's the virgin birth born under the law. Now, verse 5 talks about uh, that he might redeem those who were under the law. Oh, well, why did the Jews have to be redeemed? Because they didn't have Christ. They didn't have Christ. The resurrection. They didn't have Christ either. The Gentiles didn't have Christ, but neither did they. And that's something important as you're studying that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to remit sins. They were just a vicarious substitution. Uh, and then the sins were passed over, and some say rolled forward, forward till Christ died upon the cross. Uh, uh, let's use an example. So, okay, David. David was under the law of Moses, born under the law of Moses, lived under the law of Moses, died under the law of Moses, didn't they? When were David's sins forgiven? When Jesus died upon the cross. 
Yeah. He, that, that potential was there, though, because he was faithful to God during his life. So without the shedding of blood, and that's the blood of Christ, there is no forgiveness of sins. Uh, so it's important to remember kind of those things. But Jesus Christ, and I don't know, I think I've explained it before. Remember, when he was born, he's Jesus of Nazareth. He is the Christ. He is the anointed one. Christ is not his last name. Christ is his title, his, his position. He is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Uh, so Jesus the Christ was born under the law of Moses because that's the way God planned it. All right? And a particular importance is that he kept the law of Moses perfectly. He's the only one who was able to do that. We don't know what Joseph's last name was. The Bible doesn't say. Well, they really didn't have last names then. Yeah. If they had a last name, it might be Joseph's son. Okay. How about Joseph Bartholomew? Or something like that might be Joseph, son of Matthew. I'm sorry to say it was always the name and son of so and so. Yeah, Judas Iscariot, Judas of a town called Iscariot. <laughs> it, they're, they're, they're descriptive terms, okay? They, their genealogies, you know, the, the things were different. Jesus would have been. Uh, uh, <coughs> Jesus, or I, I've told you before, Joshua, or Yesu bar Yosef. Jesus, son of Joseph. That, that would be the legal <coughs> name. Of course, Joseph was his stepfather, adopted father. All right. Now, again, back to this being the Christian dispensation. Jesus, Jesus was born under the law. But Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it, according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 7 and 18. Not one jot or tittle would, be, would pass from the law till all be fulfilled. But what had, to be, what had to be accomplished in order to fulfill the law? Jesus died on the cross. Okay, but he had to live, the, live it perfectly, no sin and then shed his blood as a sacrifice for the sins of people. So why was it necessary for the law of Moses to pass away? Because he couldn't save people from their sins? It was imperfect. Right, imperfect. It was imperfect. The law of Moses could not save anybody. No. No, it was leading them to the one who could save. And uh, Galatians chapter 3, uh, 24 through 27 will also give you some information on that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, listen to this. For since the law was but a shadow of good things to come instead of the true form of these realities, it can never by the same sacrifices that continue that are continually offered every year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered since the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have any consciousness of sin. That wasn't the point of the law of Moses, was it? Every year, they had, not only were they taking care of the sins that they made that year at the Day of Atonement, it was for the years past, too. That's what, uh, talk about those sins being rolled forward. Okay? And be, then being passed over. That, that blood, see, that it's passing over and all those generations of those faithful people offering those sacrifices until Christ offers that perfect sacrifice. But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year, the ones that they offered. 
for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. <coughs> Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you would not have you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me, in burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, and this is quoting the Christ, okay, before he's born as Jesus of Nazareth, then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written in reference to the Old Testament passage that, that is of the prophecy, of that prophecy, okay? When he said above, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings, these are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He does away, now listen to that, he does away with the first in order to establish the second. Okay? So Christ did away with the first. What was the first? The law of Moses. The law of Moses, and not only the law of Moses, He's going to do away with the patriarchal dispensation also to establish the second. What's the second? Christianity. Yeah, the Christian dispensation, okay? And by that, or by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. In other words, Jesus is not going to come back and make another sacrifice for sins. It's over. That, that's it. So until Christ comes back to claim his own, okay, as the song says, or to for the final judgment, this is the only hope we have is the gospel. To believe and obey the gospel. Uh, okay. So his purpose in coming was to fulfill the law of Moses. And he finished the work, uh, Jesus finished the work he came to do, uh, John chapter 17, verse 4. All right? Who's got, who can get that real quick? Says, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. Okay. And that's Jesus when he's praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying to the Father. He says, I glorified you on earth because I have accomplished the work that you sent me to do. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit in this morning's sermon about why Jesus you know, is such a perfect example for us because he came to do the Father's will and he accomplished that. Okay? So the law to Israel passed away not by destruction but by Jesus Christ living up to it perfectly. In other words, he fulfilled it. All right? If you got a contract with somebody, okay, that magazine subscription you got roped into because your grandchild was was doing it for school a school project or something, okay, you know, and it cost you three times as much to get that magazine as what you would normally, okay, but but you pay it and you gladly do it because it's your grandchild and then when it's done and they keep sending you the magazines and then they say you got to renew your subscription we're sending you the magazines and you say no I don't I fulfilled my obligation I don't have to do anymore All right well Jesus fulfilled what the law was was purpose to do it no longer has any effect on us. Okay? In other words, it's not authoritative over us. Now, we'll discuss, not today, maybe next week if we get to it, or maybe the week after, really, about what the law, what purpose it has for us today. Okay? So keep that in mind. But we don't go there for authority. We don't go to uh, the Old Testament and say, like, uh, all right, I've got to offer a sheep or a goat or a bull as a sacrifice. Why not? 
because that was the Old Testament and that's been fulfilled and now I've got other things I have to do. New Testament things. Okay? Uh, so the law, the law to Israel passed not by destruction but by Christ living in perfectly the fulfillment. He thus became the fulfillment of the law. When he was nailed to the cross, the old law was nailed there with him, thus opening the way for a new law to be established. And later on, we'll look at Colossians chapter 2. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Okay, it says, By canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Okay, and most, if not all, Bible scholars talk about that being the old law. It was a record of debt, because what did it do? It, it said, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, and it just kept pointing out the sins, the sins, the sins, the sins, the sins. Offer a sacrifice. Why? Because the wages of sin is death. Okay? And the only hope that it really offered was Messiah's coming. Messiah's coming. The sacrifice is going to be made. But you got to believe it. You got to be faithful. You got to do these things. That, that was the, the, the life of the person under the law of Moses. It was a very strict law. What did we say? 613 laws. Not just the Ten Commandments. 613 laws they had to keep. It was very strict. Okay? Alright, so that was slide 34. We'll start with slide 35 next week, Lord willing. And continuing on with the Christian dispensation. Do you have any questions? No? Okay. Class dismissed.